know if you knew this, but you don't need a drone or a helicopter to create stunning aerial tours of your land. With Google Earth Studio, you can create cinematic flyovers for free in minutes without getting up from your desk. Whether you're trying to show off a building or a vacant lot or literally anything that can be seen on the surface of the earth, Google Earth Studio is an incredible tool you need to know about. And I'm gonna show you how you can make some amazing videos right here, right now. So most land investors are very familiar with Google Earth. I mean, this is like one of the highest value, lowest cost tools out there that we can all use to get a really good look at what things look like on the surface of the Earth. But what most people don't realize is that there's also an add-on called Google Earth Studio, which is also 100% free, and you can use it to produce these amazing flyover images that look almost indistinguishable from real life, depending on where it is and what kind of features are on the Earth. And it gives you full control over the lighting, the time of day, the camera angles, so your property looks its absolute best no matter what the weather's like or when you're filming. You can shoot these videos at golden hour or at high noon or at sunrise or even if it's midnight. This is like next level virtual staging without the cost. And also before we dive in, I put together a list of 10 other extremely powerful Google Earth hacks that every land investor should know. It's linked in the description below, but let's jump into Google Earth Studio. If you haven't been here before, I'm gonna have a link to it right beneath this video when you get there you should see something like this just a nice picture of the earth all we have to do is go over here to blank project and hit this down arrow and we're going to click on quick starts and the nice thing about this is that it gives you these different templates to work with depending on how it is you want to look at your property if you want to just like fly around it or fly from one property to another property. I personally don't use this one that often, but you can also do this spiral or just do this right here where you zoom right into the point on earth that you're going to. But the one that I use almost every time is this one. It's fly to an orbit and it's almost kind of hidden. You got to hit that right arrow to get to it, but it flies to it from a long distance and then circles around it. You'll see what I mean in a second. It looks pretty awesome. So we're going to click start. And the first thing we have to do here is type out either an address or a location, or if you're a land investor like me and you don't have an address, you might have to type out the actual coordinates of the property. So I've got some coordinates for a property that I'm going to put right here. And if you don't have coordinates yet, one way you can get it is right over here on Google Earth. This is actually the property we're going to be working with here. And by the way, if you see this little transparent green box I have around the property, I have a whole separate video explaining how I created this. And if you do want to create this kind of thing and you Use it in conjunction with these videos be sure to check that video out. it's actually really informative if you were working with vacant land it's particularly useful just because it makes it very clear where the parcel boundaries are in order to get the coordinates of a property you can start here by taking this little pin and just putting it anywhere i'm going to stick it right here in the middle of this this is actually the second time i'm doing it just to show you how this works and once we put that there we can go over here and find that untitled place mark and we're going to go find directions to here and when it does that it'll give you the coordinates right up here. So this is what we're gonna copy and we're gonna put that right in Google Earth Studio. So we'll go back here, paste those coordinates and it recognizes them. So just go ahead and click that and there we go. That's the property. Now, the next step, if we click this right arrow, it's gonna do a quick fly in to where this property is. And right away, it already looks pretty cool, but one thing we can do is start adjusting how we want the camera angle to look at this property. So we could uh, change how far away it is from the property. We could change the altitude. So how high up it's going to look. This might make sense if you're looking at like a giant skyscraper or something. And if you wanted to look up at it, you could do this kind of thing. Really, you just want to position the camera in a way that you think is going to make the most sense. What I usually try to do is include the horizon in the background. And by default, I don't think it usually does have that horizon there. So I try to usually adjust this just a little bit. And the reason I try to include the horizon is because with Google Earth Studio, it's it's really cool how you can set it for any time of the day, including sunset. And it's kind of cool to be able to see the sunset on the horizon. So that's why I do that. And I usually pull it back just a little bit because once I pull it back, you can also zoom in a little bit, which makes the property look even cooler, which I'll show you in just a second. You can also make it spin clockwise if you want. I don't usually care, so I'm just gonna leave it. And you can kind of get a good idea for how that's gonna look. If you wanna make any final adjustments, you can go ahead and do that. 
Now let's click next and you can select how long you want the video to be. So far in all of the times that I've used this, 25 seconds has always been fine for me. But if for some reason you have a really long spiel you want to say about it and maybe you want to put the voiceover over a longer video, you could do that if you want. So it's up to you. Just select the time length you want and click this check mark. And now we have a nice little video editor. If we push play, we can see how this is going to look by default which is pretty similar to what we already know because we just set this up. The cool thing is you can change the focal range. You can make it zoom in. You can change the angle and you can also add something like this on the property, this little green box. So what I did here, once I created this polygon was I went and I saved it as a KMZ file, just like this. So we can save it to our desktop. And once you save it, you're going to have one of these things here. And once you're in Google Earth Studio, you can go up here to file and we are going to import a KMZ file just like this. So we will find it on our desktop. And now it appears right here in Google Earth Studio. So it's circling around the exact same property. It's just that this nice thing is here now so we can actually clearly see where the boundary lines are and keep in mind if we wanted to like change what this looks like say if we want it to be lower to the ground or a different color or something like that it's very easy to do that we would just have to get back into google earth studio make the edits save it again and re-upload it again there's a separate video i have that explains exactly how to make this kind of 3d box over a parcel on google earth be sure to check that out it's super helpful i use this all the time so once we've got this it's just a matter of going back here in the timeline and playing it again and whenever we want to change the camera angle or anything about it we can pause it and start adding keyframes and making those changes so let's go right here right to the point where it stops so right about there where we see these first few keyframes here on the timeline, there's a thing over here where it says add attributes. And if you click on this, we can add field of view, time of day, clouds. If a property is near the ocean, you can add an ocean overlay that allows you to see the topography. So that might help if you were working with like an island property or something like that. Uh, I'm going to leave that off for now. And then 3D buildings, definitely turn that on if you're working with any type of property that is in downtown or any kind of an area where you can see all the buildings sticking up. Say if you're in like Chicago or a big city, it would work great for that. And then once you're done making those selections, we will click done. Now we have some new things over here on the left that were not there before. And one in particular that I always like to use is this one here that says field of view. So when we go in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this keyframe and it's going to add that little keyframe right there in the timeline. And as we go over here on the timeline, I can make it zoom in or zoom out of the property if I wanted to. Let's say if I wanted it to zoom out a little ways, I could say, let's make this 30. Now it zoomed out a little bit and it's going to slowly make that adjustment as the timeline goes on. So if we look closer here and play it, we can watch this thing start to change as it moves on. And then looking at the screen, you can see how it's slowly zooming out. It makes for a nice, cool moving effect as it rotates the property. We could also make it zoom in closer if we wanted to. So say if we brought it over here and now let's add another keyframe and make it 15 and now it just zoomed in. So we'll watch it again here. So it plays, it sort of zooms out a ways and then it zooms in. Kind of cool, huh? And then as it keeps going, we can have it zoom out again, make it uh, 25. If we can just see the nice movement as it goes through that video timeline. It goes in, now it goes out. And you could mess with this as much as you want. Now, another awesome thing I like to add pretty much every time is the time of day. If we go over here and find the time. So I believe what this is going to default to is what time it is in this location right now. But it uses GMT time, not that local time zone. So you'd kind of just have to mess with this and bring it to whatever point in time golden hour might be. Or you could even have it go all the way through tonight if you wanted to. And it doesn't have to be just one time for the whole video. It can change as the video goes on. So for example, we started over here and right here, we'll say, yeah, we'll just uh, leave it at the current time right there. But as it goes on, we want to see that time change, almost like a time-lapse style video. And we could say, yeah, right by the time we get to the end, we want the sun to go completely down. Now I'm just playing around with this right now. I haven't checked at what point in time GMT, this particular location becomes night, but uh, let's just mess around with this a little bit until we can find it. We could say, you know, 2300. What does that do? 
Okay, that's pretty close actually. Let's make this uh, 2400. There we go. Now it's nighttime and we can see that nice uh, sun going behind the clouds there. So let's go ahead and play this again. Now, I think this is pretty cool. Like I think it's pretty much just about there. But just so you know, there's a lot more you can do with Google Earth Studio beyond this when it comes to editing these kinds of maps where you're sort of traveling through time, traveling over the earth. There's a couple of the videos that I will link to beneath this one that will just give you a lot more inspiration and ideas on how you can edit this, including like putting words on the ground and other animations and that kind of thing. I don't really need that for what I'm trying to do. But just be aware there's a lot more you can do beyond this. Whenever you get to a stopping point where you think you're ready to go, you can go up here and click render. It's going to bring you right here. And this is where you can set the final parameters before you export your video. And when I say parameters, I'm talking like the resolution of, is this a 4K video or a 1080p video? I always do 4K because why not? Might as well have high resolution. So I'm gonna say 3840 right here, and that'll just make it super high resolution there. Now, another interesting thing, whenever you're using imagery from Google Earth is that you're required to give copyright attribution to Google Earth and the companies that were used to generate this satellite imagery. And the nice thing is about the these videos, it does that automatically right here. It's not displaying quite yet, but it will on our final rendered exported video. And another thing you can do is move this around. I usually move it down here to the lower right corner just so it's kind of out of the way, but it's still there. Another thing you can do here is say if you wanted to add points of interest and road names and that kind of thing on this video on the map, you can do that just like this. And you know, I can see situations where it may make sense to do this and others where it's like, yeah, I don't need that. So most of the ones that I have made to date have been clean, but it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to do that. And then also give this thing a name. We'll just call this uh, property flyover. And pretty much every time I've exported one of these things, I'm literally exporting a video, an MP4 file. But if you wanted to export individual images for every single frame of the video, you could do that too. So anyway, I'm going to export mine as a video here. Then I'll go down here and click submit. And it's going to take maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes or so for this thing to render. You don't have to stay here, but I would recommend that you save your project in case you ever want to come back to it in the future. So I'll go up here and I will click save and we'll just call it property flyover. And now anytime you log back into Google Earth Studio with your Google account, it'll have it there. If you ever want to just see where are things at in the rendering process, how much longer until this thing is done and ready to go, you can go over here to animation and click on cloud renders and it will show you where it's at. And it looks like right now it's uh, still in queue. So it's going to be a few more minutes. I'm going to pause this video and we will pick it back up once it's ready to go. All right, here we go. So this took about 10 or 12 minutes. We got an email here from Google Earth Studio. Let's go ahead and download it and see how it looks. Here is our video. Let's check it out. I notice in the lower right corner as it uh, changes the credits for the satellite imagery. It's kind of cool how it just does that automatically. Do the zoom in here. Let's watch the sunset. Nice. All 4K, beautiful, free. Only took eight or 10 minutes to get this thing done. Again, if you want to give it a try, you can try it whenever you want. It's a great resource. Does real drone footage work better? Probably. But if you can't for some reason, or if you just are in a hurry to get something put together, this is not that far off. And it gives people a pretty good idea of where things are anyway. Thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. I'll include a link to Google Earth Studio beneath this video. I don't get paid anything for this. Just wanted to let you know about a great resource. Talk to you next time.